a lot of you just copy your favorite pro settings which sometimes can be really really terrible i have a uh, fps max 500. i cap fps so what do you cap 450 that? 500. cap it at 400. so we're going to be talking about the in-game frame limiter and i'm going to be telling you why it doesn't actually improve your one person loss and no it doesn't improve your frame pacing either so Let's get right into it after Skins Monkey. Skins Monkey is an automated trading site. Simply trade an old skin that you don't want for a new skin that you do want. The advanced filters make it super easy to find anything. Use my code COOK to get $5 on your first trade and a 35% deposit bonus. They've got 24-7 live support and don't forget to take part in the free giveaways. They've got free daily, weekly and monthly giveaways. Link is in the description. So first of all, I need to catch a flight in like four hours so i need to get straight into it cs2's in-game frame limiter is like one of the worst in-game frame limiters like it's really really bad so let's see why i call it to be bad so the lower the value the worse it's going to perform so right now i'm capping at 240 it doesn't matter if i have reflex enabled or disabled and you can see my one person lows and my minimum value without even shooting just running around the black blank map it's like quite low it's around you would say like average 120 130 ish and you can see this is not really a good experience so what if i disable my reflex like twist does so let's hop onto it and you can see it doesn't really improve my one person lows in fact it would just increase my input latency what if i cap it at a higher value well when i start capping things at a higher value things are generally going to improve because the in-game limiter is not kind of you know dictating the frame pacing too much right now my average values you could say are like they're around 230 ish to 20 ish and that's quite good but it can definitely be better because i know my system has better one person lows it is a 7900 x3d with a 5070 ti again if i disable it not really so much difference again you can see the fps is around the same so not much difference in performance when it comes to enabled and disabled like 3% to 5% degradation. Then let's cap it to about, you know, like 999 or zero, like a really high value where your in-game limiter is not really dictating the pace of the game anymore. And let us see our performance now. So now, of course, our average FPS is quite good, but our 1% low has again kind of increased to about like you can say 270-ish, 260-ish, and which is quite good. Now here comes the funny part. A lot of people just think like if your frame rate is just dropping from 233 to 127 or 460 to 220, it's lesser than like maybe 520 to 260, right? But frame time is just not that way. As you can see over here, the frame time deviation is the least from 520 to 260 because it's not a simple one-to-one -one concept because your frame time from 1000 to 500 is just like 1 millisecond increase and your frame time from just 240 to 180 is like 1.389 seconds milliseconds so kindly understand this dropping from 1000 fps to 500 fps is not bad but it's bad to drop from 200 fps to 100 fps of course there are other ways to cap your frame rate and we're going to investigate that into a future video like i've already been doing this but i need to catch a flight so guys take care um sorry i've been missing i've been busy i just landed today then i have to leave today again take care bye see you next time